Hello, I'm Ward Simpson, and welcome to this episode of Today with Ward. Today's program, I have a special guest, and we're going to talk to you about the presence of God. Ah, friends, the presence of God, one encounter in His presence can change your life forever. Maybe today is that day. More on His presence right after this. In a media-saturated world, God TV continues breaking through the airwaves, bringing you life-changing programming. God stands in the gap and pours out His life force, His blood, to bring us near. Serving the church. Kill yourself with the knowledge of the Word of God, and God will make a way of escape for you. Your church will never be the same. Souls, unifying the body of Christ. Jesus came to seek and to save those that are lost. Fully surrender to Jesus. I'm asking you, let your past go. All hail the power of Jesus' name! Blessing Israel. God raised him from the dead. Can we give a shout of thanks to God TV for being our media partners? Back in Jerusalem, the nations of the world together. Everything that happens right now in history, in Israel, in the church, is moving toward this moment. Revival. It's time to go after the full mantle of Jesus the evangelist right now. We will rise again on that day because of Jesus Christ. This is a generation that will be excelling in the Word of God. Europe will be saved. It's time to see the greatest end time harvest the world has ever seen. Get a front row seat to life-changing events. Authentic, faith-building content. We're not afraid to get real and face life's bigger questions. We want this to be a safe place to have a dangerous conversation. No matter what you've done, God is bigger than any of this stuff and wants to bring you through this. Jesus is here and he's reaching out to you. I want to lift up every single viewer that is watching, every single person. No matter where you are in your walk, we have content made for you. We're asking you to do something deep in our heart, Jesus. Why not here? Why not now? Welcome back with me in the studio today is Dr. Tommy Combs. Tommy is the founder of Living Word Ministry. He's an evangelist. He travels around the world proclaiming the gospel message of Jesus Christ. He's one of us, friends. He's a dear friend of God TV. And uh, Dr. Tommy, we're so glad to have you. Thank well, you. It's an honor Thank to you be so here. God here. bless you. We want to talk about God's presence. Oh, we want yes. to talk about your books. And, but God's presence is a big... Um, it's a big subject for us here at God TV. It's a big subject for me. I've experienced His presence in a tangible way. And once you've done that, nothing else can satisfy you. It changes your life forever to get that, I call it a moment, if you will. It may be a minute, it may be five minutes, but it, just that tangible time with God changes our lives forever. There were in times during the Brownsville Revival, which I was a part of, and then the Bay Revival, that uh, we would come there. But just going back to the Brownsville Revival, there were, there were nights when you just thought the roof was going to open and Jesus himself was going to come down. We didn't want to miss a service. You just never knew what was going to happen next. We were, we were such a part of that. We're from the state of Alabama. We'd make that drive down to Pensacola, to Brownsville, and to, to be in that presence that we're talking about and how, today. How many hours just to get our viewers to understand? It was a five-hour drive. So you me. would drive five hours to come to church? Yeah, to come to church. <laughs> and, uh, and, and wouldn't miss it for anything. I mean, it was such a presence of God. that, uh, And it changed, uh, I'm going to say millions of lives. It's still changing lives. It's when we still talk changing about, lives. And so we, when we talk about Brownsville today, it's still changing lives. Yeah, we, can, we go all over the world and we meet people that their lives were either touched or transformed through the Browns Revival. And a lot of them are actually in ministry. Yes. You know, there are other moves of God where people are touched. But the presence of God, once you've tasted... <laughs> when you get in that presence, uh, the gifts come. Mm. The gifts come. In other words, the, the, the favor of God is on your life once you can be in that presence. Yeah. And the gifts, whether, whether what gift God's given us 
you and me or whoever's watching today, that gift comes, it could be a healing gift, it could be a teaching gift, could be a preaching gift, yeah. evangelism, but yeah. that's when it comes uh, in that presence. That's the reason. I, uh, Brownsville is one of the reasons I wrote the book here. Talk, talk in, about in this book person. because uh, the, the yeah. title of it, yeah, it's something, I've got to show it? our viewers, <laughs> the title of it, In His Presence, it's what we crave for. <laughs> talk we, about we, your book. I mean, what's in this book? Uh, I took uh, all of the, I started in the Old Testament with uh, Adam, mm -hmm. who got in God's presence every afternoon, late in the evening, God yes. would come down. Yes. And Adam got the favor. You know, Adam, uh, we don't know, a lot of people don't know this. Adam even had the favor after he left the garden area, mm -hmm. and he lived to be 939. So in his presence brings uh, longevity yes. <laughs> in, in, in our lives, bring yeah. praises. And then I went to Enoch. Enoch was seventh man from Adam. The seventh, that's a big number with God, seven. And Enoch just walked with God one day and just kept on walking. Just went right, right into his presence today. Wow. Enoch walked up. And then we get to Moses, and Moses, uh, we could talk about Moses, the whole program today, yeah. uh, being in the presence on Mount Sinai, yeah. uh, bringing down the tablets on the first day of Pentecost, if you will, yeah. uh, and that, that kind of presence uh, that Moses wanted to get in God's presence so bad, he said, God, I want to see your presence. I want to feel your presence. I want to be in your presence. Yeah. God said, you can't let that happen to you, Moses. It will kill you. Yeah. So you know the story where God said, I'm going to hide your face in a rock, Moses, and yeah. I'm going to walk behind you. And he did that. And when he did, he saw the hinder part or backside of God. But the terminology is history. He saw the history of God. That's the reason Moses could write the first five books, because he saw Genesis 1 mm -hmm. when God passed by in the glory. You know, we get in Isaiah chapter 6 where the glory came. Mm -hmm. I did all of those things going, because man, I'm telling you, getting in the presence of God yeah. will change your life. Mm -hmm. well, let me tell you about a 10-year-old lad who got in God's presence. Okay. We're going to talk about me just a moment. Oh, really? Wow. <laughs> I was 10, and uh, I had a terrible disease called yellow jaundice affect my liver. Right. Uh, today we'd say hepatitis. Okay. We called it yellow jaundice. It infected my liver. I went to the doctor a couple of times with, with nothing happening. Mm -hmm. The third time I went, he said, this young man needs to go to the hospital. Mm -hmm. So I, I went to the hospital in Birmingham, Alabama on a Thursday night. They examined me, came out and told my mother and dad, uh, your son has yellow jaundice. It's infected his liver. His liver is destroyed. Mm -hmm. Your son will die in three days. Your son will die in four or five days. We're going to do what we can, yeah. but not. Well, they didn't know my mother and they didn't know my grandmother, <laughs> like grandmothers and grandmothers can pray. Yeah. On Sunday morning in that hospital room, my mother and my grandmother are praying for me. Serious prayer, God heal my boy. In fact, my mother prayed the prayer that Hannah prayed in 1 Samuel chapter 1. God, if you heal my boy, I'll give him to you. That's the reason I'm sitting here today. My mother prayed that prayer. Wow. God healed Heal my boy, and I'll give him to you. Hannah prayed that prayer, and Samuel was born. Yeah. Samuel was one of the greatest prophets we had, anointed David King. Yeah. So out of that prayer, my mother's praying, my grandmother's praying for me. They're laying hands on me. They're praying for me to be totally healed. And the smoke, Shekinah glory, okay, the smoke of God, the Shekinah glory of God invaded my hospital room, came into the room. with Tangible. Such, tangible. You could see it. I mean, I'm laying on the bed as a 10-year-old young man, and I'm looking, and the smoke has entered my room. Wow. I, it just flowed into my hospital room. Wow. Listen, it was so powerful, Ward, that it knocked my mother out on the floor on that side of the bed. Knocked my grandmother out on the floor on that side of the bed. I raise up like this, and I look, and my mother and my grandmother are laying there, and I look up like this, and Jesus walked into my room. Jesus came right up to my bed, stood in my bed. I got a brand new liver in one second, totally healed by the power of God. One encounter with God in that kind of presence will change your life forever. That's when all these gifts came. I, I, I'm 10. I don't know anything about gifts. I don't know anything about discernment. I don't know anything about wisdom, knowledge, and understanding or the tongues, interpretation of tongues, or wisdom, or knowledge, or prophecy. But they all came that day, and it took years for God to develop me to where he wanted me to be. So that's the reason 
in his presence is here today oh, wow. because of that wonderful healing God gave me at age 10. Well, God and, visited Tommy in the hospital tangibly. Yes. There was a smoke. His mother fell on one side, grandmother on the other side. Wow. And then he met Jesus. I want to ask you more about that right after this. We are talking with Dr. Tommy Combs, the author of this book, In His Presence. And I want you to get this book, friends. I want you to go to the website and order this book right away. It's going to change your life. The presence of God changed my life. It's changed it forever. And uh, this book will help you to understand what the presence of God is all about. You've got to get it, friends. And I highly encourage you. Talk about this book for a moment. But don't forget, let's talk about when Jesus came in your hospital room. <laughs> uh, in his presence is, and, and I do talk about in the book of, uh, of the, the scene where Jesus came in my hospital room and okay. in the presence of God. So it's in that in, book. It's in there. So come on, we talk got about chapter, it. We got a chapter about that. <laughs> Listen, I, uh, I told you about my healing. Yeah. Jesus walked in a room with me. Right. My mother and my aunt are on the floor. They're out in the... I call it out in the Holy Ghost, if that's okay. Any nurses around? Any doctors? Not at that time, okay. but I'll tell you at the end what happened. All right. So, uh, and Jesus walked to my bed, dressed in the beautiful, most beautiful white, shiny uh, uh, clothing. Right. Garments. A blue sash here all the way down. Wow. A beard, but not a long, scruffy, just close beard. Mm -hmm. You know, close beard. Beautiful, bluish gray eyes. Mm -hmm. Hair was not very long, but long, you know, mm -hmm. long, c coming down the side. With beautiful, beautiful face, just you could, you could the compassion. Mm -hmm. uh, you could read it, you could see it, you could sense it mm -hmm. on his face. Mm -hmm. He stood there, he looked at me, he smiled at me, he smiled at me, and uh, and like I said, I'm a ten year old young man laying on a bed with the smoke of God, the, the Shekinah glory all around the room with me, and Jesus standing at my bed. What an experience of my life that happened in my life. I, I see it vividly, and then he just faded, just just faded and left the room. Wow. All right. The fire exploded in that room, okay? The fire of God, the, the, the Shekinah glory, the presence of God came in that room so strong. Mm. Other people were healed in the same hallway. Wow. Other people were healed on the same ward in the same hallway. And here's, here's what happened. A orderly came running to the room from the nurse's station with a fire extinguisher in his hand. True story. Really? came running in the room with a fire extinguisher because the fire exploded on that hallway and he came to put the fire out. Wow. It was an amazing story. How, and that's where in his presence started in my Amen. life. It's happened to me many times, many times since, or probably uh, eight, nine, ten times uh, where I've since. Wow. And it came, it, it came or comes around me. Now look, I want to get in his presence in great church services, yeah. in great conferences, yes. like we did at Brownsville. I, I want to get in that kind of presence, yes. But what I'm talking about today, Ward, is you get in his presence by yourself. Amen. I want to get in God's presence by myself. Let's do Those that. Those of you who are watching today around the world, get in God's presence mm -hmm. by myself, by yourself. Just, just ask how they, him. How do I do it? Ask him. Say, come into, God, I want to see your glory. Do it like Moses did. I want to see your glory, Do it like Moses did. God, I want to see your glory. God, I want to be in that presence so strong. be in your presence, Lord. How are you going to change your life? Get in God's presence. How is your family going to get salvation? Get in the presence of God. How's the healing going to take place? It's get in that presence of God. Financial blessings, we don't, but financial, the favor of God comes so strong when you get in this kind of presence. Look, I talk, I got Peter, James, and John in here. How their lives were changed forever. Yeah. John wrote all of our books, the Re book of Revelation. How did John write the book of Revelation? In God's presence. Yeah. That's how he did it, in God's presence. Mm. Moses, said, uh, we talk about him in the book. And then we get to Paul on the road to Damascus. That was an encounter. Yeah. That was an encounter, how one encounter with God changed Saul's life to Paul wrote most of our New Testament to us, and what a man of God Paul became when he had that one experience with God mm. on the road to Damascus. That's wow. what David recognized it. Does. David was in his time of David, sin. Oh. 
He said, God, do anything to me. Yeah. But don't take your don't presence take away your, from me. And yeah. Moses said it like this, and so, and so did Abraham, and so did many others. Jacob did it like this. God, if you're not going, I don't want to go. Amen. If you're not going with me, I don't want to go. So what's the difference between this presence and the indwelling of the Holy okay. Spirit? God's right. with us. We want to be around anointed people, anointed choirs, anointed preaching. Yes, I want to be around anointed men and women of God each day. I want to be in that presence. Difference than glory. Mm -hmm. Glory is the presence, mm -hmm. the very presence of God. Now, I was saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Spirit of God. Filled with the Holy Ghost, if you will. The Holy Spirit of God leads me, guides me, directs me, dwells in innermost being. Out of my belly flows the rivers of living water. Mm -hmm. That is the presence of God. Yes, He's with me at all times. I'm not talking about that. I am talking about an experience with God where the very glory presence of God shows up in your living room, mm. shows up in your car, shows mm. up at your workplace, Ooh. shows up in this studio right now, I feel it, in the studio right now with us here, God mm. TV, that, that the very presence of God shows up in such a way it just changes people's lives instantly. Mm. One encounter. One encounter. And it doesn't have to be four minutes or five minutes. It could be 30 seconds. But that when the God of the universe, the creator of all things, decides, okay, I'm going to give Tommy a little time. So prayer, uh, ask yeah. for him to come. Ask for him to come. Say, God, I want to see your presence. Just keep going after gonna, him. Just keep searching, running after him, if you will. Run after God. Seek after God. Say, God, I Personal want devotion. your presence. Persevere after God. Yeah. Just get in that kind of presence. When you get in that kind of presence, it changes our lives. We can't stay the same. If, how are cities going to get saved? When the very presence of God comes in our cities. Yeah. And how do we get those cities? When the presence of God in you and me, and we gather. We're doing Scotland for Jesus this next year. We're doing every we're wow. doing five major cities in Scotland. And we're going Praise in God. and we want to bring that presence mm. and the heritage that they have. Make in sure that you country. give us the information so we can help you and promote yeah, it. And for do you. and do that. And we we're, we're reaching out, but when I teach, when I preach, I say it's time for us to get in that presence. Let's pray. Mm. Let's seek God right now for that presence. Mm. I want to see that tangible presence, mm. the, the, the Shekinah glory flow in Man. the service. Should we pray now for our viewers or later? We'll pray later. Let me, okay. let me tell you this great story. <laughs> I am in a small church in Winfield, Alabama, and uh, I went to see one of my mentors, Dr. T.L. Lowry, a general in the church. Yeah. I'll go see Dr. Lowry preach. But while I'm there, the very presence of God came in the service. Mm. I'm sitting on the front row and the very presence just enveloped. The smoke of God came in the service. Now you could see or you just you felt? You could see it. You could see you it could see physically. It. You could okay. see the smoke. And that's what I'm talking about. Right. You see the smoke. You feel the presence. You know. Mm. And it, it, listen, in some churches today, we create smoke with smoke machines. I'm yeah. not, I'm, right. I, we, we put blue lights up so we could have the mid. No, no. I'm talking right, about the right, presence right, of right, God, right. okay? Amen. The very presence of God. Come on. And it came in that little church. And I go up and I want to be. Everybody got in it, got saved. Everybody got in it, got healed. Everybody got in it, got touched like never before. So I go up, and Dr. Larry prays for me. I go to the floor and come out of my body. Lord. I come out of my body. My spirit man comes out and goes to the ceiling of that church. You can see it. I'm, my or spirit man it. is up here. Okay. I'm looking down at myself on the floor. Wow. I'm looking down at the smoke. I'm looking down at people. I'm looking down at the right. choir and musicians right. Right. down here, and I come down into my body and do it again. I come out the second time and go back. God showed me the spirit man's side mm. that day when I came out of my body. How does that happen? In his presence. In his presence is how that happens. It can't happen any other way. Listen, if you need healing today, get in that presence. Yes, I'm going to pray for many people to be healed today, and they will be healed today. All around the world through this great TV network here we call God TV. God's reaching out and touching souls, and we're going to pray for that souls. Wow. Lives are changed when we get in His presence. Amen. Nations are changed Amen. When, when we get nations in His presence. Yeah. What's going to start happening now is that the very presence of God is going to show up in nations around the world that we don't think carry the presence of God, but they're going to be there. Wow. I'm talking about Middle East. Yeah. I'm talking about countries around the world Amen. that we say, well, they're not, they're not Christian nations. Mm -hmm. doesn't matter to God. He's going to show up anyway. He's going to show up in the midst of that. And when he shows up, 
the lives are changed there. Right. And, and, and men, women of God, boys and girls of God will all want to seek that presence. That's the very presence we're talking Amen. about. Wow. Now, one encounter with God would change your life. One encounter with God will change your life. We want to pray with you before we end the program and stir your heart some more and talk to you about the presence of God. So I'll be right back with Dr. Tommy Combs to, to wrap up this program and to pray for you and to believe for God's presence in your life right after this. Well, we're talking about the presence of God, and I hope you are excited and stirred as we are in the studio. Dr. Tom, we've just got a few minutes left, and yes. I think we could talk about this all day. <laughs> Getting in His presence is, uh, is the most important thing that I, that I could tell you in your life. We could, we could talk about how to do this and how to do that, but mm. uh, my word today is get in God's presence. Amen. One encounter would change your life forever. That day when uh, God came in my hospital room, Jesus walked up to my bed, I was healed. I didn't know what happened to my life. Of course, I'm a young 10-year-old young man. But immediately, discernment, wisdom, knowledge, understanding came into my life. I, I could discern things and, and talk to my mother and my grandmother about those things. Wow. And so the gifts come when they come. Yeah. But I was in uh, the Garden of Gethsemane in 1992, and I was praying by myself. We had a group, but I walked away from the group, and I was sitting down. Uh, under an olive tree on the far right of the Garden of Gethsemane, He's sitting there praying, just seeking God myself, mm -hmm. and the presence came. A cloud surrounded me. Now, I could not see the other people. I guess they could see me sitting there unless they could see the cloud, but the cloud, this kind of glory cloud surrounded me, and God spoke to me and said, you're not doing what I want you to do. Mm -hmm. I said, well, let me tell you what I'm doing. I'm doing all these things in the church. He said, you're not doing what I want you to do. I said, well, what do you want me to do? He said, I want you to lay hands on the sick. That was in November of 92. Forty days later, that's a big number with God, exactly 40 days later. I'm in Birmingham, Alabama, and my mother calls me and says, Tommy, uh, a young man that we know has cancer of the pancreas at UAB Hospital in Birmingham, Alabama, and I want you to go pray for him. Mm -hmm. I went to the hospital at UAB. I went up to the eighth floor on the cancer ward. I go in and visit him. He's surprised to see me. I'm surprised to be there. He says, I said, what's happening? He said, I'm dying. I said, what are the doctors doing? They said, I'm watching me die. I have cancer of the pancreas. Mm -hmm. God has to heal you. Mm -hmm. I said, I'm going to pray for you, okay? He said, yes, be glad. I prayed for him. I cursed it. Now, listen, you've got to talk to cancer. You've got to speak to it. Mm -hmm. Like I'm talking to you today. You've got to speak to it and tell it to go. I told the cancer to leave him. I told him he shall live and not die. I spoke it. I anointed him with oil. I prayed for him. I left, and God healed him. Cancer of the pancreas healed. I said, okay, I got this. Mm -hmm. I can do this. I've been doing it ever since. Yeah. But, but the, God healed that man of cancer of the pancreas. Up to this day, in my records that I try to keep, and I, there's so many more that I can't keep up with because of TV ministry and because of evangelism type ministry in foreign lands where you can't keep up with so many. Mm -hmm. 65, stage four, I'm going to die in two weeks healed. I take communion with them. Wow. I take communion. I go in their home. I go in the hospital room. I take communion. Communion is the meal that heals. Mm -hmm. Lord, I come to you today, and I pray right now for the healing power of our Lord and Savior, mm -hmm. Jesus Christ, to flow right through these cameras right now. Mm -hmm. God TV is reaching around the world today, and that healing power that I'm talking about is coming to you today. If you need a healing today, I want you to take your hand and touch yourself, maybe on your chest, on your head, on your knee, on, or on your stomach, wherever the problem is today, lay your hand on yourself. And I pray in for you today to let the healing power of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, flow right through these cameras, right into your home, right into your place of business, right into your hotel motel room mm -hmm. where you're watching this program right now. Yeah. The healing power of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now say this with me. I receive you, Jesus, as my Savior. I thank you for saving my soul, and I thank you for healing me. Today, I receive the healing power of Jesus Christ into my life. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me, and thank you, healing me. I receive it. In the name of Jesus, amen, amen. 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 Thank you, Done. Jesus. And thank you, Tommy, for yes, being sir. with us. Thank you for stirring our hearts about yeah. God's presence. And we pray today, friends, that God's presence would fill your homes, fill your school, fill your office, 
fill your life and transform you. As Tommy's book says, one encounter in his presence will change you forever. Make sure and get a copy of his book, In His Presence. Go to his website, go to wherever books are sold and get his book. It'll change your life forever. We love you. We thank God for you. Tommy, thanks for being on yes, the show. So friends, until next week, please tell somebody about the presence of God. <laughs> love you. Thank you for watching Today with Ward. Please join us again next time. In the meantime, we'd love to hear from you. Please email today at God.tv. Also, please consider becoming a God TV partner. For more information, visit God.tv.